Hey, what's up guys? Ryan here from Extreme Terrain, and today I'll be reviewing and installing the Rugged Ridge All-Terrain Fender Flares fitting your 1987 to 1995 Jeep Wrangler YJ. This is gonna be for the YJ owner that is looking to upgrade or replace those old, worn out, faded, or broken Fender Flares. This is a great upgrade for those of you that have aftermarket mods such as wider offset wheels and wider tires because it's gonna provide more coverage. These are eight inches wide versus your stock ones, giving you a ton of more coverage. That's gonna keep you street legal on the road and keep you from kicking up rocks, stones, and mud, anything that could damage your body. These are made of durable ABS plastic and they're very flexible. They're also UV treated, which is gonna keep them from any sun-related fading or cracking issues. Now these come painted black, but you're able to color match these and paint them any color that you would like. Now with these, there is some drilling required, but I show you exactly how to do that in the video. These fender flares will fit up to a 33 inch tire, but if you do go any higher than 33 inches, you may have to trim these flares a little bit. Now these come with all brand new hardware to install and it is stainless steel hardware, so it's gonna stay rust proof. And with this kit, you get all four fender flares. Now these are incredibly priced and very reasonable for a full set of aftermarket fender flares at just around $270 is a great option to go with. And Rugged Ridge even backs these up with a five year warranty. Now as far as installation goes, I'm gonna give this a pretty tough one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. Expect this to take about a half a day to install and you will need some specialty tools such as a drill and a drill bit. Now with that being said, let's hop into the install. Tools that we use for this install, a drill, quarter inch drill bit, eight millimeter socket, quarter inch drive ratchet, eight millimeter wrench, an 11 millimeter wrench, six millimeter Allen key, Phillips head screwdriver, and a pry tool. So the first thing we gotta do to get these new flares installed is take off our factory ones. So we're gonna start here up at the front. The first thing we're gonna do is take our light out. So you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver to get both of those screws out. Then we'll work on pulling this thing off. So once you get this light, you're gonna get the socket on the back and you're gonna turn it a quarter of a turn. That's gonna unlock it and we can pull this light out. Then we're gonna set this aside because we're gonna reuse it with our new flares. So I got one of these out just to show you exactly what we're dealing with. We have this little plastic block and then we also have this little screw. This little screw takes an eight millimeter socket and what I'm gonna do with these little plastic pieces right here is you can just hold them with these pair of pliers or you can use vice grips. But these are on the outside, they're on the inside of the fender and the, the screws are in the inside of the metal fender. So you'll need to go from the backside with a socket and then grab one of these little blocks. That's basically going to be all of these. So we're just gonna go around and get all of these out and then we'll take this fender off. So take our vice grips, we'll clip onto the block, hold that in place, and we'll use our eight millimeter to get these screws out. Well, they are a little rusty and it really doesn't matter if you destroy them because they have brand new hardware to install our new flares and we have to drill holes in the new spots anyway. Now this one here, pretty much in the middle, is going to be up through and there's this little angular plate as well. We'll knock some of this rust off. Make sure that we get a good seat on the socket. So you're gonna to wanna to spray them with some kind of PV blaster or creeping oil, that way that they'll actually have a chance to come out. So we're gonna use an 11 millimeter wrench to get these out and hopefully they come out for us. Now the third bolt is gonna be way back in here. So we're gonna use that same 11 millimeter to get this bolt out.
So we'll get this last screw out that we missed and then we can pull this whole section off. So now we have a front disassemble. The next thing we're gonna do is disassemble our rear. Now the rear is gonna be all of those little screws and little plastic blocks. So we're gonna use our vice grips and our eight millimeter socket to just go around, get this whole thing off. Now for this back one here, you're gonna to need to pull this flap down. That way you can access the screw head from the back side. It's gonna be the last one that we need to get out and then we can pull this flare off. After you get all the screws out, we can pull the fender off and ditch it. So at this point in time, we're just about ready to install our new fender flares. We're gonna start here on the rear. And just to point out, the rear is side specific. So you wanna pick the correct side and you'll know when you line it up there and you line up both of these edges if there's a slant or not and we got the right side. So the first thing we're gonna do before we get this thing installed is apply this weather stripping. So we get this strip of weather stripping and it has a little bit of double-sided tape on it. There's a red piece to peel off of here and that's gonna adhere to here. So we're gonna take this whole edge right here. We're gonna take an alcohol wipe, wipe it clean, get any contaminants off of there. Then we're gonna measure this out, stick it on there and apply it. Then we'll throw it up there, tape it up, put it in position and start drawing our holes. So we got an alcohol wipe here. We're gonna open that up and wipe this thing down. After you wipe it down, you wanna try not to touch this edge because your fingers will leave a little bit of residue on there and some oil, and it might make that double-sided tape not stick as properly. We'll get that edge nice and clean. Toss that to the side. And we're gonna find the end of this weather stripping and get this thing on here. So we're gonna support that tire like that. You're just gonna take this little piece right here, you're gonna peel that off. Now that you're gonna have a longer edge and a shorter edge, we're gonna place the longer edge up top. We're gonna to start down here. And when you're applying this, you wanna try not to stretch it out because it may cause it to shrink once it's been on there for a while. So we're just gonna gently push this over this edge, trying not to stretch it. And we'll go all the way around and then we'll cut the excess off. Probably be a good idea to do all of these uh, first, and that way you make sure that you have enough to go around. So we got it all the way around to the edge, so we're gonna go right to this edge, we're gonna cut this excess off. That's all good and nice and neat. Now we're ready to set this up and get our holes drilled. So like I said, the next thing we're gonna do is hold this fender up against the body because we have some holes to drill. There's a couple of things that I wanna mention. We wanna make sure that this front edge and this back edge are level with this body. And also, since on the inside, we have a welded seam right along here, we wanna make sure that we drill these holes low enough that we don't run into that. So that's one thing that you wanna make sure when you reach up on the backside. Also, we're gonna to need to pull this wheel tub out slightly because when we drill these holes higher, we're gonna to need to get above that so we can put the nuts and the washers on the backside. So I'm gonna grab a friend, he's gonna hold one side, I'm gonna hold the other side, we're gonna mark all these holes, we'll pull back off and then we'll drill them. We're gonna get this back side close to this body line right here. And we wanna make sure that we're level with the bottom. Bring that down some, just like that. We'll make sure that that edge is tucked down. Good amount. Now we're gonna go around, you can use a paint marker or a Sharpie, I'm gonna use a Sharpie. And we're just gonna mark all of these holes. So now that we have all of our holes marked, we're gonna go around and drill all of them. We're gonna use a quarter inch drill bit. If you wanna drill a couple of holes and then line it back up, bolt that on and make sure those other holes line up, that would be a good idea.
So after you drill all the holes, of course you want to paint all that bare metal so it doesn't rust. And then the next thing we're going to do is get this wheel tub out. Now since some of our hardware in here is really rusty, we don't want to take the whole wheel tub out. So what I'm going to do is just get a pry up underneath of this edge. We're just going to pull this edge down enough that we can get our hand back there. That way we can get the washers and nuts off. So we'll just do that. Let's go all the way around, get this whole edge out, and then we'll go from there. So the way these things are going to install, we get these long Allen headed bolts. These are going to go through the flare into our tub. On the back side, we're going to put these little rubber spacers. These spacers, since there's a gap in here, are going to take up that space there and allow that to seat properly. So we're going to go through our fender flare and we're going to put a spacer on the back. Now you're going to get two different size spacers. You have a bag of slightly thicker spacers, there's only 10 of them, and then we have another bag that's going to be the smaller ones. We're going to use the smaller ones, the shorter ones, for the back side. So we're just going to go around, put these spacers on the back. You can do one at a time if you want, and then we'll need to reach up in there, do a flat washer, and then one of those uh, nuts. Now for this very back one, we're going to need to go up to the bottom so we'll leave that flap open. Now this one right here, this is actually going to go into the inside of the body. So you'll need to open your door and then access that from there. So we're going to open our door, flip our seat forward, and then same thing, flat washer and a nut. So after you get all that hardware installed, we're going to go around and tighten everything up. You need a 6mm Allen key for these bolt heads, and then for the nut, you can use an 8mm wrench or a socket. You don't want to tighten these too much. That rubber is going to give some sort of dampening. So we just want to snug them up a little bit, make sure that they're tight enough that they won't come undone or fall off. So that's going to do it for the back end. We're going to go up to the front. We're going to do that same thing, but we're going to start with the flare extension. That's going to set the bottom of the back side of the front flare. So like I said, we're going to start up here with the flare extension. This is this section that's going to go right across here. That's actually going to set this back side for when we drill the holes. Now we did have an issue with our nuts, so we wound up drilling them out. We're just going to nut and bolt them together. So we're going to crawl under here, get our hardware ready, bolt this thing on. So if you were able to reuse your factory bolts to get this flare extension on, we're going to tighten those back up with an 11 millimeter. So now we're going to work on the flare. So the same thing we did for the rear flare, we're going to do for the front flare. We're going to start by wiping it down with isopropyl alcohol. We have a wipe right here. We're going to apply that seal to the outside, that gasket, and then we're going to fit it up and mark our holes. So we're going to grab our flare, open this thing up, and then we'll wipe it down. Remember, you don't want to touch that edge after you wipe it down. Pick up our seal and start peeling some of this layer off. And then remember, we want that top edge to be on the top, the longer edge. So we're just going to start it down here, get it to wrap around. And same thing, we just want to peel little sections off at a time and you want to try not to stretch it. Excess off, toss that aside, and then we can mark this up. All right, so to get this front fender installed, the way we're gonna line it up, we're gonna take that light that we took out, the marker light, and we're gonna install that back into our fender. This is gonna allow us to somewhat line it up for when we put this thing back on. So once we line this up, we wanna make sure that the back side of this plug is gonna poke through that hole in the fender and then we can probably get one of these screws in here. So we're gonna take a Phillips head screwdriver, 
try to get one of these screws started. And that should help us hold this fender up somewhere. All right, so once you get this thing up there, you're gonna use the light to hold it in place. You wanna line that up. You might need longer screws. The stock screws don't seem to be long enough. So we got longer ones to hold that in place. And we went around and marked all of these. So you want this to sit flush back here with the bottom edge of the tub and up against this nice and tight. We marked all of our holes and we're gonna go ahead and drill them out. We're gonna use that same quarter inch drill bit to drill all the holes and then we'll get all that hardware installed. So another thing I'd like to mention is on the back side of this fender, right in the middle of there, you're gonna have this standing seam. So you wanna make sure that you drill below that. And if you reach underneath of the metal fender and feel that, you'll feel that edge standing up. So just drill in between that section, just below that. That way you'll be able to get the washer and the nut on there. Now most likely you want to take this fender back off when you drill these holes, that way you don't mess up your new fender. Once you get all of those holes drilled and you paint all of that bare metal, we're gonna do the same thing we did for the rear fenders installing that hardware. Once you get all that hardware installed, we're gonna go around and tighten everything up. Same thing we did for the rear, six millimeter Allen key, eight millimeter wrench. So the last thing we're gonna do on the front end is install this light. So you wanna tighten up these screws you put in. You also wanna plug that bulb back in. So we're gonna reach underneath of there. We're just gonna put that bulb back in its socket and you'll feel it set in and then we'll turn it about a quarter turn and then lock that in place. Make sure that these are nice and tight. Now once you get this side installed, you can do the same exact steps to get that other side installed. However, that's going to wrap up my review and install. For more videos and products like this, check us out at ExtremeTerrain.com.